بكت عيني بكت عيني بكت عيني على ذنبي وما لاقيت من كربي فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب Our scholars say, generally speaking, people die doing that which they love. In which state will moth take over me or you? How do you want to be when the angel of death comes? We want to be saying the kalima. We want to be doing that which is noble. We seek Allah's refuge from ever the angel of death coming when we're doing something ignoble. We want to be upon thabat. How will that happen? يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah will give you that thabat. And subhanAllah, you know, I lived in Medina for a decade. Wallahi, every few days or weeks, and especially during Hajj season, we would hear of stories, and I witnessed myself, of somebody passing away in sajda, passing away right after Hajj. You think that's a coincidence? You think somebody can predict that? Somebody can ask for that and it happens? Wallahi, this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a gift. I've witnessed this and been around people like this. As soon as they do hajj and they come to the haram or they come to the medina and they say their salah and khalas, bismillah, they're gone. That is not something that you can get. It's a gift from Allah. Why did they get that? How did they get that? يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ they're thinking about it, they want it, they maybe even make dua for it, and then Allah Azza wa Jal blesses them with that. This is what it means to prepare. I don't know when I'm gonna die, how I'm gonna die, neither do you. But we have to prepare for that time. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good death. Seek refuge in Allah from an evil death. Be prepared for the angel of death. And then afterwards as well, as we're all aware, during the journey towards the qabr, we are told, both the mu'min and the kafir are aware. Their perceptions are there. Now that you've seen the angel, you have a premonition. As for the mu'min, he's eager to get into the qabr. He knows his qabr is going to be a place of light, a place of perfume. He knows he's going to see the greenery. He knows he has good deeds waiting for him. The Quran is going to be there to give him light. His salah will give him shadow. His good deeds are going to greet him. As our Prophet ﷺ said, when the mu'min is put in the qabr, an entity comes that is is beautiful, that is handsome, that is calming, his presence is calming. And the mu'min says, who are you? Your presence is bringing me comfort. And this entity says, I am your good deeds. You were preparing for this, now I am here with you. I am your good deeds here with you, to be with you, to give you comfort. You're not going to be alone. I'm here with you until the actual qiyamah takes place. And while he's in the qabr, our Prophet ﷺ said, a window will be open and he will see his palace in Jannah waiting for him. He will see all the beautiful trees. He will hear the birds. He will do everything. He will say, Ya Rabb, make the judgment quick so that I can enter my house. This is the one that is the mu'min. And the opposite, we're all aware, وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ We seek Allah's refuge. The opposite, the qabr, is a very terrifying place. Our Prophet wasallam said, and he has seen what he has seen. You know what he said? It's a scary hadith. I have never seen anything except that the qabr is more terrifying than it. I have never seen anything. And what did he not see? He saw heaven and hell. He saw Malik, the angel in charge of hell. He saw punishments when he went to Isra and Mi'raj. And yet what did he say? مَا رَأَيْتُ مَنْذَرًا قَطْ I've never seen anything except that the qabr terrifies us more. We, have to, we don't want to go down that route. Our Prophet ﷺ himself sought refuge from the adab and from the fitna and from the vulma and from the diq, the darkness and the, the, the tightness of the qabr. He sought refuge from that because the one who doesn't have any good deeds, that qabr is going to be dank, narrow, dark, constricted. بالله, we seek Allah's refuge from that. And on top of that, an entity will come, filthy, corrupted, smelling. And the man will say, woe to you, what are you? Your presence is terrifying. And he will say, I am the deeds you sent forward to this day. This is your preparation. I'm here with you. And Allah will then open up a door to Jahannam. 
And he's going to see exactly where he's going to go. And he's going to say, Ya Rabb, never allow Qiyamah to come. But his dua means nothing. It will come. Because Qiyamah is also, كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا 